Hello, Mystery Report subscribers and Tutor Program subscribers and everybody. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is Sunday. It's September 17th, 2023. It's 11.37 a.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks. And this is Mystery Report for 2023, number three. Looks like there's going to be between four and six Mystery Report, Mystery Reports that are made. And you can subscribe at the website. Right over here, go down the page. Mystery reports is $25 per year. You get access to all the newsletters going back to 2019. Unlike the Black Star reports year by year. Go all the way back to 2019, start at number one, the two Gospels in the New Testament. Everybody that subscribes, so this is the tutor program. So with this one, this $25 a year, you get access to the newsletters. With this one, you have the benefit of writing to me your questions like Gary. I'm answering his questions today. And the good stuff goes into a newsletter, and that's to help others, like what's happening right now. Everybody that subscribes to any of these four newsletter programs, or whenever you get your Nano Silver, you get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, the EPUB version that you can read using digital, what is it, uh, Adobe Digital Solutions, is that the name of it? And you can read them on Kindle, and when you get your Nano Silver, you get the extended PDF version too, and my 9-11 book attached too. Then, before you get that far, you're going to want to to watch these six introductory videos, two Gospels of the New Testament, two churches in the New Testament, four baptisms, the differences between God and my Father who art in heaven, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, we're going to be talking about some of that today, and then God's true Bible code, spirit, blood, and water, and they're getting God created the heaven and the earth, we're going to get, get into some of that today too. And you get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, like clicking right here, this is a signed autograph. Number 98 is the next one going out. This is for USA and International. And you can also get a copy right here, although they say that it's temporarily out of stock. And uh, there's new used paperbacks and such over at Amazon. So, in this report number three, this, news, this newsletter program, is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation and everywhere in between. Once you see the three witnesses, it changes everything. Now, Gary is likely the most advanced person besides himself that sees the three witnesses. He's uh, He's got copies of my book. He's ask me more questions than anybody else. He's my buddy that comes over and helps me here on uh, on the property doing all these projects and things. He's He sent me a, the original email June 24th and the title was, was Zechariah. It's actually entitled Zechariah 12.10. Then I added Isaiah 53. That's what he makes mention, mention to. And then I added, after reading this and editing today, then I realized that the subtitle should be Epiphanies Regarding First and Last Adam. Then, after this was written, I put a PS at the end and started writing again, because this set the foundation up for a, the deepest mystery of Scripture, likely. God's mystery, the mystery of Christ, spirit, blood, there's another. That's never mentioned, it's taught from the, throughout the whole Bible. But it's never mentioned. And I began writing on that, and then it became longer than this. Than this post. I was going to, you know, P.S. and then add it at the end as like a bonus, and then realized, this is deep, this is far. And so it became newsletter number four. That's going to be coming up after this one. So this starts off, hi Tarot, they will look to me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. 
grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Who's he talking about here? He reads very similar to Isaiah 53, where he is referring to the first Adam, Christ Jesus. It is the same. Is it the same for this verse in Zechariah or something different? So, again, Gary's likely the most advanced. When I'm writing to Gary, then it's the more on the meat side generally because he's gone through the the babe in Christ um, milk and he's digested that and grown and so whenever he says right here he's referring to the first Adam comma Christ Jesus then he already understands that Isaiah 53 is written in the past tense for a reason that's written in the past tense because it's talking about the first Adam and it's talking about Jesus Christ at the same time who is the incarnation of the Lamb of God in heaven that's why John the Baptist identified him right away the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world the incarnation of the Lamb of God who's still in the center of the throne in heaven who is the incarnation of heaven of Genesis 1 1 I know this gets kind of complicated that is the highest heaven of first Kings Chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. So, bottom line there is there's a whole lot of incarnating going on. Incarnations. From realm to realm to realm to realm. And the best example to use to understand the incarnations is the Word of God. And that truth, the truths relating to the Word of God as incarnations, bleeds through to Gary's question right here about Zechariah 12 10 that reads a lot like Isaiah 53 and whenever we read both of those from both of those passages we're going to realize deeper truths that God has put there for us to find those of us on the deeper end of the pool So here's my reply to links and, and diagrams and things were added this morning. Yes, Zechariah 12 reads a lot like Isaiah 53 because the Lord God, who's the Lamb of God, he began his consecration work in Genesis 2-4 after God rested in him. His speaking and God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the water witness, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is being poured out to open the eyes of the sons of Israel. So that's what's going on back in Zechariah. That's what's going on, well, in Isaiah 53, that's what's going on throughout the New Testament. I'm sorry, the Old Testament. So here's a diagram of Genesis 1-1. This is the key to unlock God's real Bible code. In the beginning, God's Spirit created the heaven and the earth. The heaven is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, that for some is going to be very difficult to, to, to be able to visualize. And the earth is the heaven, seven and earth of Genesis 1, 6 through 8. Together, these witnesses comprise the man of God. The heavens, heaven, and earth, this is a man. This is the man, heavenly Adam, Christ Jesus. The man with a spirit, soul, and a body, Christ Jesus. And this is the three witnesses testifying for the Almighty from Revelation 1.8. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come, the Almighty. These three witnesses for testifying for the Almighty are very similar spirit, blood, water relationship as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19. Three witnesses testifying for the Word. This is my Father who art in heaven. See, this is heaven. Has he heaven? See my Father who art in heaven? That's him right there. Some of us with the spiritual vision can see my Father who art in heaven. 
this is Christ in us, Christ that is incarnate inside of us, in our spirit, in our soul, and in our body. Our body is a tabernacle, a temple of the Holy Spirit. Like our soul is where Christ dwells, and our spirit is where my Father who art in heaven dwells. Three witnesses testifying in us as Christ in you. The new man. The new man that we have given to us the moment we obey the gospel. In the mystery explained, all these truths are laid out in diagrams. This is really this is the very, very, very beginning. So remember that things are happening on earth. In blue, water witness, below the heavens in heaven. See right here, things are happening in the earth. As it is in heaven, Genesis 1.8. This is heaven of Genesis 1 8 right here. The heaven between the heavens and the earth. As it is in heaven, heaven of Genesis 1 1. Right here, the highest heaven. Right here. So things are happening in the earth as they are in heaven. They're happening in heaven as they're happening in heaven. That sounds confusing again, doesn't it? This is heaven. This is the highest heaven. This is the heaven of Genesis 1-1. This is the heaven of Genesis 1-8. There is a difference. Okay, so there's a lot of information in this single sentence where you see these, these uh, parentheses. So things are happening on earth as they are in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm. Things are happening in earth. This is the earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven right here. This is where Michael the Archangel is fighting the dragon. This is where the lake of fire is. In this realm right here. Almost infinite realm. So things are happening in the earth. As they happened already in heaven. As they happened already in God's infinite realm. So Christ. Get in, well throughout the Bible. You see the te testimony of two and three witnesses, two or three witnesses. Sometimes we're given all three witness testimony, spirit, blood, and water. Most of the time we're given two of the three witnesses. One of them's left out on purpose. That way, those of us who have the key to unlock God's mysteries throughout the whole Bible, we are able to see there's a blood witness, there's a water witness. We know there's a spirit witness. We just have to figure out who it is. And once we figure out who it is, we can go look up his testimony to see how he's testifying about the other two witnesses. And if it's a spirit witness that's missing, that's missing, how he's testifying for all the other spirit witnesses in the whole Bible. So once you see the three witnesses of Scripture, this, this cannot be overstated. Once you see the three witnesses of Scripture, then you begin to realize all the witnesses are testifying about all the other witnesses. Simultaneously. So reading God's word over and over and over again helps us to, to see the testimony of each of these witnesses separately and then to realize how, for example, three witnesses of Elijah, Christ, and Moses, the three witnesses of the Mount of Transfiguration. Take all the testimony of Moses, all the testimony of Elijah. And then you combine that with the testimony of Jesus Christ, particularly whenever he is speaking about Moses and Elijah. And then you can see that they're all testifying about one another. And what God is really showing us in his word, particularly those of us who see his wisdom, his wisdom that's hidden that he unveils, as some of us can see, clear as day. And then we can share that information with others for whom Christ died. And that's what you see going on between me and Gary here. He can see it. He didn't see it very well at the beginning. And then he's like a little kid, waking up early, early, and staying up late at night, and waking up early in the morning, cracking his Bible. and Because when, when you see these things, and it become it begins to grow and develop 
inside of you and then you're walking a path and you want to know what's around the next corner and then you you begin to see the blockages like a stone that's in the way that needs to be moved so you can see what's behind it and that leads to the questions like the questions that he's asking right here it's through your questions that I can see where you are on the path and then what you need to hear in order to see beyond that obstacle because the path that you're walking is the same path that I walked years ago so things are happening on earth as they are in heaven as they are in God's infinite realm that's the simple truth Christ says on earth as it is in heaven without saying as in God's infinite realm because he's given you two of the three witnesses he's given you the water he's given you the, the he's given you water in the blood earth and heaven on earth as it is in heaven he's not giving you the spirit witness part as in God's infinite realm but we combine that with other truths like when he says you are gods he's quoting David in in uh, Psalms 82 6 you are gods and sons of the living God that's true here this is the only realm that's real, guys. This is the only realm that's real. This is a matrix. A fake world created. Time and space are creations. They are not real. And then from here, this earth realm was spoken into existence through God's word. This entire realm, all things were made by him. And through him was not anything Without him was not anything made that was made. All of this, everything that's here, was made by God's word. Everything here was, it's, this is an incarnation of God's word right here. But God and his word are still one in God's infinite realm. God asked his word. He said, word? Guess what? Adam's been killed. The static rebellion. Adam's been killed. To restore Adam, you are going to go over here and incarnate. And then you're going to remake Adam inside yourself again. Perfect, mature, and complete. Like on the day that he was made in God's infinite realm. So that's the, if you read Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11, then you'll read that we're doing things already done. And it mentions the ages that came before us. Well, we're currently now in the, the perfect, right now we're in the evil age. Of Genesis 1, of Galatians 1 4, the evil, this evil age. It began with the darkness that fell in Genesis 1 2, which, if you have some understanding, you realize that ages that came before us are the ages of Genesis 1 1. And this, these words right here contain ages and ages and ages and ages. Perfect ages. Everybody's created. Nobody was born. Nobody had to be born. Everybody was made. Everybody was made perfect, like Adam in Genesis 2 7. Yet, he had no spirit, he had no body, he had no soul. They were all the same thing. So in the, the earth of Genesis 1-1, see this is not the first diagram. The first gen diagram has three spheres of heaven, of the infinite realm of heaven and of earth. Perfectly round sphere. Everything in this universe was one thing. The Big Bang happened whenever that previously existing perfect universe was destroyed. And what we're looking at in the cosmos is the reconstituted remains of that perfect universe. Well, in the same way, God's word had to be sacrificed to become the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this earth was sacrificed to become the heavens, heaven, and earth. It became formless and void, darkness on the face of the deep. And then the waters above the firmament and the waters below the firmament were joined together in the expanse. Firmament, heaven. Genesis one eight, the expanse was called heaven, and that it is. But this is the, this is heaven of this universe. This is heaven of Genesis one one, the highest heaven, in whom all of this was created. Okay, so we can't get go to the next one. I'm giving you a lot of background information that's not shared directly verbatim in this post. Therefore, when the Lamb of God in the center of the throne, their shepherd, 
speaks and says, Behold, I am going to, this is back from Zechariah, from the, his target verse they asked me about. I am going to, then, the Lamb of God is testifying as the incarnation of Christ Jesus, who is testifying for God's word in God's infinite realm, who is testifying for the Almighty doing all things via his word, because God and his word are one. Okay, so to reiterate just a little bit, God's word and God are one right here. God's word incarnate over here as God's word, heaven of Genesis 1-1, one, one, that is broken and re-put back together again to become Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's how the Son is begotten. So the original word had to be sacrificed. The Holy Spirit was pulled out of his side like Eve was pulled out of the side of Adam. Like the earth was pulled out of the side, the earth was pulled out of the side, this earth, heaven, seven, and earth, was pulled out of the side of the original earth, perfect age earth. So all of these witnesses see a water witness. All of these truths together reveal that in every case, the water witness is pulled from the side of the singularity. That's broken. Then there's a spirit witness that must overshadow the, the the power from on high, Luke one thirty five, the power from on high overshadows the Holy Spirit, so that the that conceived is called the Son of God. Holy Spirit overshadowed by my Father who art in heaven, only begotten Son. That's the same exact pattern for the heavens, heaven, and earth. Same exact pattern. The earth was formless and void, darkness on the face of the deep. The earth was pulled out, waters below the firmament, and then where the heavens and the earth overlapped, that is the begetting of heaven. So the heaven is begotten, the sun is begotten, and your soul is begotten from the breath of life that comes from God and from the, what comes from the dust of the ground. Same pattern, three witnesses, and a singularity broken to become three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Same truth. So therefore, if you're following, God is testifying through Christ Jesus, the Word incarnate as heaven. The Lamb of God, He's incarnate in heaven of Genesis 1.8, and Jesus Christ, the Word incarnate on the earth, about the things he has done and will do in God's infinite realm. Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, and Jesus Christ all testify as the last Adam. Like everyone from Adam to Abraham to Joshua to Elijah to David to John the Baptist testifying about the earth, Adam, and as the earth, first Adam, about heaven, the last Adam, Christ. Like Christ, Word incarnate, is testifying as heaven about the earth. So what this boils down to is heaven is the incarnation. This is the heavenly Adam, the last Adam. Some translations call him the second Adam. Some the last Adam, but he's the heavenly Adam. He is from above. Is testifying about the earth. That's in its simplest form. Heaven testifies about the earth. And the earth testifies about heaven. Because all blood witnesses testify about the two witnesses. The blood witness in this case testifies about God and the earth. And the earth testifies about the Son of God and God. God testifies about his Son, heaven, and the earth. The first Adam. Lost my place here. Oh, then we can get to the, this is one of the most important verses pertaining to this, to answering this question for Gary. He, Jesus Christ, this is John the Baptist speaking. He, Jesus Christ, who comes from above, which is from heaven, is above all. And the one who is only from earth, 
that's John the Baptist, is of the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. Very, very important to realize that John the Baptist is testifying of the earth. He's also testifying about heaven. So this is the truth, but it's not the whole truth. As you're reading these words, then you can see, with you have spiritual eyes, that he that comes from above is testifying as heaven about the earth. So when John the Baptist is talking about Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, he's describing him, earth is describing heaven. Whenever Christ is describing John the Baptist, his messenger that came before him, then Heaven is testifying about the earth. Always realize on earth as it is in heaven, as in God's infinite realm. So knowing that truth is the key that unlocks God's word. So you can realize that God's word is living, it's active, and it is multidimensional. So whenever God is speaking, whenever the Son of God is speaking, and that includes, that's the Son of God with a big S, there's only one of them, Jesus Christ. Heaven incarnate. This entire, all things is incarnate inside of him. Pardon me. I just had a coughing attack. One Son of God, Jesus Christ. One God. The Almighty. For whom... The word testifies. And then there's one son of God with a little s. His name is Adam. It's like, what's that? Luke 3, 38. The son of God. When you look at the lineage. And they're all testifying about one another. As the infinite realm, where you are gods, as heaven, and as earth. That's what the whole Bible is about. So my statement to Gary here is that you are coming to the knowledge of the first Adam, the earth, the word of God, the word of the word. Christ is the word of God. Adam is the word of the word. So you're coming to the knowledge of the first Adam and the last Adam, which is heaven, over an extended period. So because we live in time and space, then the learning experiences are scattered out. And it begins in, with faith and then knowledge and then wisdom, as shown in the last misreport. Three-stage process. Seeds, shoots, and, I mean, um, seeds of faith, shoots, and then wisdom, the fruit, where the next seeds come from. So Gary's coming to this knowledge over an extended period, with the assistance of Christ in you, holding your hand from within and guiding you to these things, these truths, in this darkness. That's where the seed is sown, in the darkness. And then it merges, pushes through into the light. So imagine the impact of these that these truths will have upon a member of the kingdom bride, for example. So, let me stop right here. Gary knows the difference between a mystery body of, Christ, body of Christ member, you and me, that obey the gospel of the grace of God. Members of Christ's body, we judge the world and the angels, blood witnesses. He knows the difference between the kingdom, between the body of Christ and the kingdom bride. Kingdom bride, Peter, John, and James, gospel of the kingdom. They're priests, we're kings, we're judges. They're a kingdom of priests. So my statement here is, imagine how these, um, the impact these truths will have upon a member of the kingdom bride with the gift of the Holy Spirit, showing them these truths with great clarity in the flash of an instant. Those with the gift of the Holy Spirit have no need to be taught anything. They just know it. Gifts, those with the gift of the Holy Spirit can raise the dead. They prophecy. They're men of knowledge. They have knowledge they don't even know they got. Members of the kingdom bride have many, many advantages over body of Christ members in Paul's day. Many. 
they have disadvantages too. They will for the ages to come. Vast differences between members of the kingdom bride. See, they join us in Christ going through the ceremonial ritual of the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's Revelation 19, start at 5. At the end of every age is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those members of the kingdom bride that, that clean their garments, they're scrubbing, 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 cleaning their garments, making them pure, perfectly white. So that's what we obtain by obedience to the gospel for free. They work for it. So they have disadvantages, but they have advantages too. And it's important to realize that this is one of them. So they're going to be able to see these things with great clarity in an instant whenever they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. They are changed in the snap of a finger. And just know things. That said, I mean about prophecy, fulfillment of prophecy, water witness stuff. They'll know everything. But what's hidden between the two veils in the holy place, things that are given to us, members of Christ's body, they cannot see at all. They're looking at a veil. They can't see it. It's veiled. Then the connection is made between the Lord their God, who is the Lamb of God, that's the Son of God to Israel. Hebrews 1 8, the Son is made to be God over Israel. So that connection is made to their God, who's God Almighty gives them to be their God, the Son of God. And Elijah coming to restore all things. He's the prophet. He's going to lead him into the promised land until he is recognized. They recognize him as David, their king. As th Then they realize they're the members of his body in this universe. Every living host in this universe is a member of Adam's body. Every member in heaven is a member of Christ's body. Every member in God's infinite realm is a member of God's body. And there are only three bodies. Period. Well, uh, so far as the good guys, the righteous, three. That's it. Then um, there's an opposite side of the equation. The members of the Antichrist body, bad guys, baptized into the Antichrist like we're baptized into Christ. For each of these realms, there's, and that's it's explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. It's not in these diagrams. This is the righteous side. There's also an antithesis, negative side. There's a mystery of Christ. That's what you're seeing here. There's a mystery of iniquity. That's the antithesis side. That's another truth that teaches that God's word is multidimensional. So whenever Paul's teaching us about the Grace doctrine relating to the body of Christ. He's also teaching about the doctrine of condemnation and wrath for the members of the body of the Antichrist. So they are all around us. Deception is everywhere. Deception is their key tool. We are, re we are re doing things over and over again from the Satanic Rebellion. Those that deceived us in God's infinite realm are here incarnate all around us doing the same thing, even now. So eventually, everybody in heaven is going to see these things that I'm showing you. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, are they're engraved on the standards of heaven. Up high, where everybody can see them. They're engraved on the walls, on the pillars, columns. And the, the great teachings are in the hallways going into the temple. Where there are many veils that separate. And members of heaven can only go so far through so many veils. The ultimate goal is to reach the inner sanctuary. It's almost like a video game. The sons of God are given rewards of achievement that we wear on our chest plates as stones. Some of them, some of the stones are are great and edges are like razor blades shining light and some of us have rough cut stones that look like coal just rough and dark and dingy wrong color the golden ones and the red ones are the ones that you want by the time we get to the ages of the ages the very end 
Then the gold ones outline the red ones in the middle, and they have the shape of a cross. So you can look at all of your brethren that you pass, and you can look at their chest plate, and you get that you see their story, and how well developed they are, or how immature they are, just by looking at them. You you, you know, one hundred percent, and depending on what's on your chest plate, you can go through certain doors. And whenever you get to the dead end, there's you cannot get out, because none of the stones match what's in your chest plate. And you are your only choice to turn around and head back the way you came. The only way you can move forward is if one of your elders, one of your elder brothers, takes you by the hand, and he's going to hold your hand, literally, the whole time that you pass through a door you're not supposed to go through, because his chest plate has stones that will allow it. But if he, if you, he lets go loose of your hand and you get loose in there, that's his responsibility. So good luck getting any of your brothers to take you anywhere beyond where your stones allow. That doesn't happen very often. And if it does and, and you break free and you're running loose in areas where you're not, you don't belong, then he is severely punished and you as the elder, elder are severely punished and your stones will be removed. You have to earn them back again. So that just some of the things that are taught through the types of Scripture, telling us what, how things are in the future for us, those of us in heaven. There's a the positive righteous side, and there's the antithesis side. When we visit those in the lake of fire nearing the end of every age, then there's a day of visitation where we go and we visit those who mistreated us. And then you're going to see the inverse, what I'm talking about right here, the antithesis of the mystery of Christ, the mystery of the Antichrist, the antithesis. Everything is turned upside down in the, on the negative side of the heaven realm. So the top of the pyramid, for example, on the righteous side is Christ, and it's bright, brighter than the sun. And those of us that are near the top, it, it, the light permeates everything that we are and everything we do and it even permeates those that we visit as a testimony the antithesis is true for the lake of fire lake of fire is, is an inverted pyramid and at the very bottom is guess who the devil the beast and his false prophet and his sons that's where the hillary's and the obamas are the house of rothschild the council on foreign relations people They've earned their places. The liars that you see defending Biden and you know they're up here lying to us every day. They're earning themselves the lower and lower places. They think that they're all in solidarity and that they have they're pulling the wool over our eyes and things. That, yeah, just let's just let them have all the fun that they want because they we're going to visit them in the lake of fire in their nakedness. God's condemnation and wrath seared into their forehead and all the little lies and everything going to be exposed. Every single thing. Even the secrets are going to be shouted on the rooftops. So you, you feel the persecution coming from them right now, right? We all do. The one sixers. And they want to make all of us a one sixer. Throw us in gulags. They want to kill us. And that's a good thing. Let them have their day in the sun because the shoe is going to be on, their, on the other foot and not just for one lifetime, not for a brief period between now and when the black star gets here. The, the little teeny bit of persecution that we get, even if they kill us, it's nothing compared because we're going to visit them and at near the end of every age in the lake of fire. And with the, the, as the, each age we go to the new earth, the new heaven and new earth, and then there's another new heaven and new earth at the end of the next age. And there's another new heaven and new earth. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And we visit these monsters in the lake of fire every age. And we get more and more to the truth of how they deceived us with Satan in God's infinite realm. Until the whole story is known by the time we get to the ages of the ages. The, they have no idea. They eat the wicked that are all around us. The Clintons and the Obamas and the Bidens, they don't have any idea that they are burning in the lake of fire even right now. Like we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, they're burning in the lake of fire. And the evil 
treachery that they're doing, they're only earning themselves places lower and lower and lower in the depth of the cauldron that's burning. And with every age, they get a new body that is indestructible. And every age, the lake of fire gets hotter and hotter and hotter. We can't even visit them at the beginning of each age. It's impossible because the, the, the screaming and it's just, it's impossible. It's, they have to go through the, the, the acclimation process, if you will, for almost an entire age before they can even be, you can even have a conversation with them. And then they suffer through us, all of us, the righteous being used by them, visiting them over and over and over again with remembrance of the previous age and the previous age and the previous age. And then they get to the, we get to the end of the age whenever there's a new heaven and new earth and then it all starts over again for them. So the little bit of time that we are here and that they have, they rule and lord over us, well... Just keep a little in the inward smile on your face, no matter how bad it gets. Because God is going to put them at our feet. And he's going to make them know for ages and ages and ages how much he loved us every step of the way. Really, really great stuff. The glory that's to be revealed to us is indescribable. Using human words, it's impossible. So the sons of God, these sons of Israel will have a similar epiphany moment when they show up on the sea of glass. Those are the early rain's bride at the right hand of the Lamb. So Peter, John, and James, Cornelius, the members of the kingdom bride from 2,000 years ago, they're about to be, they're about to be raised at the first resurrection. They're not members of Christ's body with us. See where they are? They're right here. They're at the right hand of the Lamb on the sea of glass. So from their perspective, they're looking up at the Lamb and He's in the center of this throne here. What they can't see is the angels on the invisible sea. That is their angel, angelic counterparts. On earth, it's happening. On, on this water witness realm, which is like the earth, the sea of glass, these things are happening as they are happening with the angels. But the members of the of the of the uh, bride of Christ, these are the body of Moses. These are the members of the body of Moses. They sing the song of Moses. We are members of Christ's body right here. All of us members of Christ's body. We're all contained within the Lamb. And these, guess what song they sing? So if you if you can see God's wisdom, spirit, blood, and water, you'll realize there's a song of Moses, there's a song of the Lamb. They're both mentioned in Revelation. What you don't see is the spirit witness. There's a song of Elijah too, sung by the angels, those who do not see death. Like Elijah didn't see death. Elijah is testifying for all the angels. They're the members of his body. They're everybody on the earth, everybody in this universe is a member of the body of Moses, who was an incarnation of our mother Eve. Adam and Eve. I know. It looks like a, a giant leap, doesn't it? But when you see through the, using the types and you see through the, the spiritual lenses that God gives us, then you're going to see every single word that I'm telling you is true. And everybody, all members of Christ's body, all members of the Lamb, all of us are going to see these things throughout the ages to come at the right time, at the time that God says there's Time for you to see it. But the most blessed of all of God's creation are those of us that can see it now. In this evil age, walking through the valley of shadow of death, to see God's wisdom and to share it with others is the greatest, greatest thing that you can do in the experience of this life. These things that I'm showing you right here, spirit, blood, and water, these things are extremely important in heaven. Some of us see that. Most of us do not. And you're missing out on a gigantic opportunity to leapfrog other members of Christ's body in the, in, the, in the pyramid of New Jerusalem where you have a dwelling. And in the mountain of God in God's infinite realm where we are all 
all the sons of God jockey in competition with one another. Who's the greatest among us? Who's the fastest runner? Who's the, the best at this and best at that and best at that? God judges us all. And he places some of us right up there by him and some of us down at the bottom. You have an incarnation there. You're placing some of your brothers at your right hand, those you like. And you're placing some at your left hand, those who you do not like. And the way that we place our brethren within us changes our outward appearance. And then God judges us all on how wise we are in our selections. So that's what Paul is teaching us in Romans 12, start at 4, when he says that we are members of Christ's body and we are individually members of one another. Because we are in this world and in heaven and in God's infinite realm. We're all members of one another. We all know each other intimately from the inside out. It's just we, some of us know that for a fact right now. Some of us, uh, we're, maybe we'll grow to under, have that understanding at some point in the timeline. And then that bears out, well, the golden rule. To treat others as you would have them treat you. Always. Because there are ramifications later in the timeline. When we mistreat those around us, they have the same opportunity to mistreat the incarnation of us in them in God's infinite realm later in the later down down the road so my objective is to treat each of you like I want me treated inside of you in God's infinite realm in that knowledge do it my best anyway we're all on this side of the veil we're all human and we do our best no I was beyond that the only realm that's real did I get you through all this? Adam restored. Before. They're going to have a similar moment at the right hand of God whenever Christ returns. So Israel, whenever the Lord God, whenever the Son, the Son of Man returns on the clouds at the end of the age, they're going to have that moment again. An epiphany moment. They're going to have that moment whenever the kingdom is restored. And Elijah, Elijah is going to raise his hand and be talking in front of all of Israel, in front of an altar. And during that speech, all Israel is going to be changed. They're going to follow him across the Jordan River as Elijah. The Elijah they've been waiting for. Their eyes are going to be opened up. They're going to see him. But during that speech that he gives all of Israel, the Holy Spirit's going to open all their eyes and they're going to realize that Elijah is their father, David. That they're standing in the kingdom of God, in David's kingdom. They're standing there right then. And their eyes are going to be opened up to realize that their father David is also their father Abraham. Their eyes are going to be opened up in the flash of a moment. All Israel is going to be changed. Standing before the king. Standing before the prophet, who's more than a prophet. Who was incarnate 2,000 years ago as the son of a priest. He's the prophet, priest, and king of the earth, like Christ is the prophet, priest, and king of heaven. The first Adam and the last Adam. So this is one of the diagrams, and it shows God restoring his son, and God restoring this, God's son restoring Adam. Heaven's heaven and earth. This is one son of God being restored. The members of his body. All the angels and all the men are eventually put back together again, Humpty Dumpty style. There's a wedding. That's what the marriage supper of the Lamb's all about. There's a there's a human host on one side, and there's a angel on the other side, like a man and a woman. And, and the Lamb of God is the like the high priest, marrying them. The two walk together into the Lamb to become one immortal soul. That's how the priests, Peter, John, and James, the entire kingdom of priests, that's how they join us in Christ Jesus. Not by being seated there in the heavenly places by the power of God, but by physical matrimony, ceremony, the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's how they join us. So 
one of the members on the sea of glass joins one of the members on the invisible sea, that's right up here, to become one singularity expression. So the time comes whenever all those in the earth, in the whole universe, and all those in the heavens are joined together in Christ Jesus. They literally transcend this universe by walking into the Lamb and becoming one in Christ Jesus with us. We are the first fruits. We're the head of the spear, if you will, body of Christ. We're going to be judging the world and the angels. Now you can see why, some of you, you can see why that we judge the world and the angels. We must judge the world and the angels. Because the angels are the better half of the men. Like these are men and these are women. They have to all be judged. And then whenever they're, well, they pass the judgment, then they join us. There's a there are pictures in the Mystery Explained showing the pyramid and the paths that they take and how they come together. and All of that is described in the Mystery Explained. So stand in the infinite realm at the top. This is where we're all going back to. So eventually the last atom and the first atom become one. This entire realm and this entire realm, heaven and earth, become the same thing. Eventually. The ages of the ages. Until then... What This is the Almighty right here. And he says, this is my beloved Son, God who is incarnate. He takes this tabernacle. And there's this comes from another diagram, by the way. Showing the 777 man of God. This is lowered from the almost infinite realm by the power of God. This is impossible to do, except for God can do it. And he lowers it into New Jerusalem the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, between the heavens and the earth, this becomes the administrative hub. And, well, whenever you're looking at them, New Jerusalem is a portrait of God's word. It's a portrait of the written word of God. It's a portrait of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a portrait of the heavens, heaven, and earth. It's a portrait of your spirit, soul, and body. All of these three witness mystery sets, you see these overlapping circles? They're everywhere. And once you recognize this is spirit, blood, and water, you see them literally everywhere. In the people around you, in the cosmos, inside of you, everywhere. And those witnesses begin singing. Well, it's really they're speaking, but whenever they are singing in symphony and chorus together, then you begin hearing the song. And their testimony. Whenever you start hearing the song, you know that you're on the right path. You're getting closer and closer to where we all meet and gather in heaven in God's infinite realm. In heaven first and then in God's infinite realm where we're all gathered together testifying. We're standing in a, like a circle around a, what appears to be a mystery jewel. That mystery jewel is Christ, God's word. And we are peering through an individual facet of that jewel put there just for us. I am looking through a particular facet of that jewel. You look through a different facet from a different little different you know angle. You're looking at a different through a different facet. All of our brethren are looking at this same jewel from a different perspective, standing in a gigantic circle. And each of us must testify to what we see to add to that angel song. I'm just calling it angel song because it's the song of the lambs what it is. Each of us must testify and each of us comprehend what each of our brethren is saying because we are all connected. So within each of us, within our being, inside of us is the incarnation of Christ Jesus. On Christ Jesus are many faces, the faces of our brethren. They're all testifying. So we're standing with our brethren hearing the symphony. And we are looking inside of us, hearing the symphony, the same song coming from within us, the testimony. It's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing. I have a big smile on my face. Because for some reason, the Lord God allows me to see these things. That's where the diagrams came from. And to share them with you. And if you're seeing these things, that God chose you to see it. If he opens the door and gives you the key and lets you open these doors. And if he lets you show other people and show them these things 
you are among the most elect of people. God is, must choose you to see these things. And he's going to open doors for you all along the way. So that you can describe what you see by looking at Christ through that singular facet that's yours so that all of your brethren can benefit from it. Like I'm testifying to you right now, you're, God's calling you to do the same thing. You're going to testify whether it's in this age or the next age or one of the ages to come. And once you realize you're in a big competition, then you're going to be wanting to solicit your brethren, me if possible, to be your tutor. You're going to be pulling stones off your chest and giving them to me and say, please show me. Because at the end of the age, your stones are going to multiply. So that you have greater access in the coming age. Stand in the infinite realm, figure two, up here. For a moment to realize that we, the gods, are witnessing to the restoration of Adam, all things. In the absence of time and space which exists only in heaven and earth. Therefore, all these epiphanies, they will look upon him who they pierced and weep, will take place in the flash of an instant to have magnanimous impact upon God's sons to ensure no satanic rebellion ever happens again. So everything that happens in the heaven and the earth is happening for a singular reason, to make impact upon each son of God life-changing experience so that we walk a new path and that no Satan can come along and deceive us ever again that's what all this is about the restoration of all things inside of this realm Adam and the restoration of all things in the heaven realm Christ is being done with us as an active participant so that we join those, the, the body of Adam. You are a member of body, Adam's body right now. And if you are, have obeyed the gospel, you're a member of Christ's body right now. And you, before even these ages were created, were a member of God's body in God's infinite realm. That's where the, we, God is affecting the change in you. In the flash of an instant. Because all the ages of heaven and earth pass by within one single flash of a moment from our perspective in God's infinite realm. All of these events take place for ages and ages and ages, thousands of ages, within the flash of an instant for us that are in the infinite realm. Where time and space, there's no even concept of time and space, or angels and men, or birds or beasts, or fish. There's no concept of darkness or anything that's like that. Those things only have meaning here in this matrix. That's created for, well, our judgment as victims or perpetrators. Then, after writing this, I'm coming up in an hour right now. Then, uh, I realized the foundation was laid to help you see God's deepest mystery. This is the beginning of it, and then... The, what's below is bigger than this post. And I realized uh, this needs to be part two. So editing my original email to Gary and for sharing this information in 2023 newsletter number three has led me to the threshold of an epiphany moment. Highlighting the opportunity to provide clarifying statements on one of God's deepest mysteries. While God's mystery is Christ, and Paul writes about the mystery of Christ, the mystery of Adam is taught only in God's word using the types. So that's like the uh, the body of Elijah. There is a body of Elijah. Some of you can see that there's a body of Elijah. It's comprised of angels. You can see it right now because you can see the types in these three witness mystery sets. Some of you think that I'm just crazy as a June bug. But it's, uh, it's, it's real. It's very, very, very real. So God uses this two or three witness rule. So there's a whole pile of verses here through God's word, to reveal his wisdom to his sons while hiding things from others. For example, our mystery church today is the body of Christ. We're the blood witnesses. We're baptized into Christ. Romans 6, 3. Here's a pile of Bible verses. And, and we see the teachings on the body of Moses. Those are water witnesses. They're priests. 
kingdom of priests. They are baptized into Moses, 1 Corinthians um, 10.2. Knowing God's three witnesses testify together means there must be a spirit witness counterpart connected to the body of Elijah that you can see in the upper left column of this diagram. Okay, this is my beloved son, and you see it's Christ, Moses, and Elijah. This is the last. There's also a first. There's a first and the last. Christ makes mention of that time and time and time again. Now this is when the saying, the first is last and the last is first and all that stuff. Okay, well this, they're showing them the last, which is actually the coming in of the kingdom. But these are the last three witnesses, the last witnesses. The, Elijah and Moses are going to turn out to be the witnesses of Revelation 11. You notice they have the same powers as Elijah and Moses, same exact powers. Because they are. Thing is, there's a deeper truth here. Far deeper truth. And I'm going to wade, well, I'm going to take you guys through that in this next, this upcoming mystery report. And, um, show you the truth about what Christ was really teaching Peter, John, and James. Because what they recognize and what they acknowledge as the truth is not the truth that Christ was conveying to them. It's the truth that I'm showing to you. I'm, show, I'm showing you the first part of it here. Lay down the foundation for it. The truth is missed by people today. With God's completed word, they think that they have the answer to it. And whenever you have, you think you have the answer to something, that you stop looking, and then you, you get duped. So Christ was really teaching in Matthew. Whenever they were coming down for the Mount of Trans Transfiguration, Christ was teaching Peter, John, and James a bigger truth than what they acknowledged and to what they understood, as it says, verse thirteen there, that they understood that Christ was talking about John the Baptist. Christ was speaking as the as heaven, speaking about the earth, and speaking about much, much, much more. So that's going to be what's shared in the coming lesson in Mystery Report number four. So that's the report that I have you for Mystery Report number three. Appreciate your support very, very much. I hope that you'll get more information. You can subscribe. Whoops. That's the browser that I usually use. You can subscribe to the Mystery Report right down here, as I showed you earlier. You're going to get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, attached to your notification email. And the price, the, the that attachment and what you learn from The Mystery Explained is worth far, far, far more than $25 a year. And you're going to get access to all the newsletters going back to 2019 and all the they have all the links to all the video reports so there's a breadcrumb trail that's laid down for you to start with the two gospels of the new testament the two churches four baptisms that's going to carry you all the way through to where you get today with this mystery report that's more advanced and you're probably scratching your head going mm, what the heck is this guy talking about but it seems to have a ring of truth to it well some of you need to begin at the beginning and you get that access you can get a free mystery report by clicking right here download it it's free and then you can get some idea of go, go to this YouTube channel and watch the video start at the beginning and if you don't want to use PayPal then you can use Z uh, Zelle and you can use Cash App and if you don't want to use any of those write to me right here and I'll give you a PO box and some of my diagrams, so I'm helping uh, Dr. Anna and Clifford and you see the light. So there are some articles here. There's articles here about 9-11. Talk about my substack, tarot.substack.com. If you have the resources, I hope that you'll support me there. You're going to get biological weapon information, my interviews. When you order your nano silver, you get the full two. It's two hours, 15 minutes. Whenever uh, I was interviewed right here. So there's 9-11 information, nano-silver information, 
counterculture mom, all types of information here at Substack. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at tarot03.com, and I'll see you on the next mystery report.